Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of WIDS 2023, the eighth annual Women in Data Science Conference, which is held at Stanford University. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I'm really excited to be having some great co-hosts today. I've got Hannah Freitag with me, who is a data journalism master's student at Stanford. We have yet another inspiring woman in technology to bring to you today. Kelly Huang joins us, data scientist at Gilead. It's so great to have you, Kelly. Hi, thank you for having me today. I'm super excited to be here and share my journey with you guys. Let's talk about that journey. You recently got your PhD in information sciences. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I just graduated, my, completed my PhD in information sciences from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and right now I moved to Bay Area and started my career as a data scientist at Gilead. And you're in better climate. We Well, we do get snow here. That's We've true. proved that a lot. And data science can show us all the climate change <laughs> that's going that's on true. here. That's the topic of the data thon this year, right? Yeah. To understand the change in the, in the climate. Yes. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your background. You were mentioning before we went live that you come from a whole family of STEM students. So you had that kind of in your DNA. <laughs> Well, I consider myself uh, maybe I I am a luck I was a lucky case. I did um, like grew up in a family in the STEM environment. My dad actually uh, was a professor in computer science. Ah. So I remember when I uh, when I was very at very young age, I already see like data, so all of these computer science concepts. So grew up to be. A data scientist is always something like in you my mind. You aspired to be? <laughs> yes, I love yes. that. So I consider myself in a lucky place in yeah. that way, yeah. but also like during these journeys to become a data scientist, you need to navigate yourself too, right? Yeah. Like you, you have this root, like this foundation, but then you still need to kind of like um, figure out yourself. What is it? Is it really the career that you want to pursue? Yeah. So, but I'm happy that I'm end up here today. Um, and where I am right now. Well, we're happy to have you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so um, you're with Gilead now after you're completing your um, your PhD, and were you always interested in the intersection of data science and health, or is that something you explored throughout your studies? Oh, that's an excellent question. So um, I did have background in computer science, but I only really get into biomedical domain when I did my PhD at school. So my research during my PhD was um, natural language processing, NLP, and machine learning, and their applications in biomedical domains. So, um, and then when I graduated, I get, got my first job in Gilead Science. It's super, super close and super um, relevant to what I, my research at school. And um, at Gilead, um, I am working in advanced analytic department. And our focus is to bring artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning into supporting clinical decision making. And really the ultimate goal is to how to use AI to accelerate the uh, precision medicine. So yes, it's um, something very like, I'm, I'm, le I'm very lucky to get the first job that which is very close to my research at school. That's outstanding. You know, when we talk about AI, we can't not talk about ethics. Mm -hmm. Bias. Right. We know equities there's equities. Yes. Uh, in healthcare. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Equities in healthcare. Equities in so many things. Mm. Talk a little bit about what excites you about AI. What you're doing at Gilead to really influence. I mean, this we're talking about something that's influencing life and death situations. Right. How how do you, are you using AI in a way that is really maximizing the opportunities? that AI can bring and maximizing the value in the data, but helping to dial down mm -hmm. some of the challenges that, that come with AI. Yep, uh, so as you may know already with the digitalization of medical records, um, this is nowadays is a, is a we've, we have an tremendous opportunities to fulfill the dream of precision medicine. And what I mean by precision medicines mean now the treatments for people can be really tailored to individual yes. patients, depending on their own like characteristic or demographic or whatever. Right? And um, natural language processing and machine learning and AI in general really play a key role in that reno um, innovation, right? Because like there's a vast amount of information of patients and patient journeys or patient treatment is conducted and recorded in text. 
So, right. yes, so that's why like our group was established. Actually, our department, Advanced Analytic Department in Gilad is pretty new. We established okay. our department last year. Oh, but wow. But really, our mission is to bring AI into, into this field because we see the opportunity. Now we have a vast amount of data in about patient, about their treatments, how we can mine these data, how we can understand and tie law the treatment to individuals yeah. and keep everyone better care. So I love that you brought up precision medicine. You know, I always think if I kind of abstract everything, technology, data, connectivity, we have this expectation in our consumer lives we can get anything we want. Mm -hmm. Not only can we get anything we want, but we expect whoever we're engaging with, whether it's Amazon or Uber or Netflix, to know enough about me to get me that precise next step. I don't think about precision medicine, but you bring up such a great point. We, we expect these tailored experiences in our personal lives, why not expect that in medicine as well? Yeah. And have a tailored treatment plan based on whatever you have, based on data, mm -hmm. your genetics, and being able to use NLP, machine learning, and AI to drive that is really exciting. Yeah, you reca recap it very well. But then you also bring up a good point about the challenges to bring AI into this field, right? Yeah. Definitely, this is an emerging field, but also very challenging because we talk about human health. We, ha we, we are doing the work that have direct impact to human health. So everything needs to be, whatever model, machine learning model that you are building, developing, you need to, it needs to be precise. It needs to be evaluated properly before like, using as a product or apply into the real practice. Yeah. So it's not like recommendation system right. for shopping or anything right. like that. We're talking about yeah. our actual health. Yeah. So yes, it's, it's yeah. challenging that way. Yeah, with that, you um, already answered one of the next questions I oh had yeah, because okay. like medical data and health data is very sensitive. Yeah. Um, and how you at Gilead, you know, try to protect this data to protect like the human human beings, you know, who are the data in the end. Yeah, yeah. The security aspect is critical. You bring up a great point about sensitive data. We, we think of healthcare as sensitive data or PII if you're doing a bank transaction. Um, we have to be so careful with that. Where is security, data security, in your everyday work practices within data science? Is it, I imagine it's a fundamental piece. Yes, for sure. We uh, in at Gilead for sure for in data science organization we have like intensive trainings for employees uh, about data privacy and security, how you use the yeah. data. Yeah. But then also at the same time when we work direct directly with data set, it's not that we have like direct um, information about patient at like yeah. very granular level. Yeah. Everything is need to be kind of like anonymized at right. some points to, right. to, to, to protect uh, patient privacy. So we do have rules, policies, and um, to follow, to, to put that in place in our organization. Very much needed. So some of the conversations we heard, were you able to hear the keynote this morning? Uh, yes, okay. I did. <laughs> I attended, like, I listened to all of them. Isn't it fantastic? Yes, yes. yes. Especially hearing these women from different backgrounds, yeah. a different level of their professional life, sharing their journeys, like, yeah. it's, it's really inspiring. And Hannah and I have been talking about, a lot of those journeys look like this. Mm -hmm. I know. They just kind of go, yeah. no, it's Point very, like, yours is linear, yeah, but you're kind of the exception. Yeah, that's, that's why I consider my case is that I was lucky to to grow up in like in that in, in STEM environment. But then again, back to my point at the beginning, sometimes you need to navigate my s yourself yeah. too. Like uh, I did mention about, um, I did my PA, um, sorry, my bachelor degree in Vietnam in STEM field in computer science, and um, that time there's only five girls in a class of 100 students. So I was not the smartest person in the room, and like I kind of like minority in that areas, sure. right? So at some point I asked myself, like, huh, I don't know, is this is really my career? It seems that other like male people or students they did better than me, but then you kind of like I always had this passion of data, data, like so you just like navigate yourself, keep pushing yourself over those journey, mm -hmm. and um. 
by being where I am right now. And look, at you, look what you've accomplished. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's very inspiring. And yeah, you mentioned how you were in the classroom and you were only one of the few women in the room. And what inspired or motivated you to keep going, even though sometimes you were at these points where you're like, okay, is this the right thing? Is this some the right thing for me? Yeah. What motiv motivated you to keep going? Well, I think personally for me as a data scientist or for women working in data science in general, um, I always try income I always try to find a good story from data. Mm. Right? It's not when you have a data set well, it's important for you to come up with methodologies how you like what what are you going to do with the data set? Mm. But I think it's even more important to un kind of like getting the context of the data set. Like think about it, like what is the story behind of this data set? What is what is the thing that you can get out of it and what is the meaning behind? How can we use it to to, to be help use it in a useful way yeah. to have in some certain use case. So I always have that kind of like curiosity and encouragement in myself. Like every time someone handed me a data set, I will always think about that. So it's helped me to like build up this kind of like passion mm -hmm. in 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 my, for me and then yeah and then become a data set. So you had that that internal drive, I think it's in your DNA as well, when you were one you were when I fight, you're 5% women in your computer science undergrad in Vietnam, yet as Hannah was asking you, you found a lot of motivation from within. Mm. You, you, you embrace that, which is right. so key. When we look at some of the statistics, speaking of data, of women in technical roles, we've seen it hover around 25% the last few years, probably five to 10. <coughs> um, I was reading some data from anitab.org over mm -hmm. the weekend, and it shows that it's now, in 2022, the number of women in technical roles rose slightly, but it rose 27.6%. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're seeing the needle move slowly, but one of the challenges that still remains is attrition. Women who are leaving the role. You got your PhD, you have a 10 month old, you've got more than one child. <laughs> what would you advise to, a, uh, to women who might be at that crossroads of not knowing, should I continue my career and climbing the ladder, or do I just go be with my family or do something else? What's your advice to them in terms of staying the path? Uh, I think it's really down to that you you need to follow your passion. Yeah. Like in any kind of job, not only like in data science, right? If you want to be a baker, or you want to be a chef, or you want to be a software engineer, um, you. It's it's really like you need to ask yourself like is it your is it something that you really passionate about because if you really passionate about something regardless how difficult it is like regardless like you have met so many kids to take care of you have the whole family to take care of you have this and that you still can find your time to spend on it so it's it's really like let yourself drive your your own passion drive the way where you leading to. Yeah. I guess that's my, um, my advice. Kind of like following your own North Star, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, is what you're suggesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I what, guess role, I what role have mentored, mentors played um, in your career path to where you are now? Um, have you had mentors on the way or people who inspired you? Um, well, I did, I certainly met quite a lot of women who inspired me uh, during my journey, um, but Right now, at this moment, one person, particular person that I just popped up into my mind is my current manager. Uh, she's also data scientist. She's ca originally from Caribbean and then came to the U.S., did her PhDs too, and now led a group all women. So believe nice. it or not, I am in a group at all women working in data science. So she's really like um, someone inspired me a lot, um, like someone I look into up to in this career. I love that. You went from being one of five females in a class of 100 to now having a PhD in information sciences and being on an all-female data science team. That's know, pretty it's cool. Right. Yeah, it's, it's right. it is. And then you see how fascinating that how things shift, right? And now today we are here in a conference that all are women in data science. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, it's 
Thanks for sharing that. Light. So this year, so we're fortunate to have WIDS coincide this year with the actual I, International Women's Day, March 8th which is so exciting. Which is always around this time of year, but it's great to have it on the day. The theme of this International Women's Day this year is embrace equity. Mm. When you think of that theme and your career path and what you're doing now and, and who inspires you, how can companies like Gilead benefit from embracing equity? What, what are your thoughts on that as a theme? So I feel like I'm very lucky to get uh, my first job uh, at Gilead, not only because the work that we are doing here very close to my research at school, but because also because of the working environment at Gilead. Yeah. I, uh, inclusion actually is one of the five core values of Gilead. Nice. So by that we means um, we try to create and creating a working environment that all the differences are valued. Yeah. Like regardless your background, your gender. So at Gilead we have Women at Gilead, which is a global network of female employees that help us to strengthen our inclusion culture and also to um, influence our voices into the company culture, company policy and practice. So, wow. yeah, I'm very lucky in to work in that in environment nowadays. It's impressive to not only hear that you're on an all-female data science team, but what Gilead is doing and the actions they're taking. It's, yes. it's one thing, we've talked about this, Hannah, for companies, and regardless of industry, to say we're going to have 50% women in, in our workforce, by 2030, 2035, 2040. It's a whole other ball game for companies like Gilead to actually be putting pen to paper, mm -hmm. um, to, to actually be creating a strategy that they're executing on. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, and that's so it must feel good yes. to be a part of a company who's really adapting its culture yeah. to be more inclusive because there's so much value that comes from inclusivity, thought diversity, that mm -hmm. ultimately will, will help Gilead produce better products and services. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, actually, this year is the first year Gilead is a, is a sponsor of the WITCH conference, and um, we are ex so excited to establish this relationship and looking forward to like having more collaboration with WITCH in the future. Excellent. Yeah. Kelly, we've had such a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for sharing Thanks. your linear path. You are definitely a unicorn. <laughs> we appreciate your insights and your advice to those who might be navigating similar situations. Thank you for being on theCUBE today. Uh, thank you thank so you. much for having me. Oh, it was our pleasure. Yes. For our guest and Hannah Freitag, this is Lisa Martin from theCUBE coming to you from WIDS 2023, the eighth annual conference. Stick around. Our final guest joins us in just a minute.